Written together. Episode 1.02. Segment 1. The Beginning. Hello. Hello. I'm Summer. I'm Janice. I'm Dee. I'm Kevin. And this is Written, written together. together. Every season, we work collaboratively, collaboratively to tell a different story. Each episode of the season, one of us extends the story from where the last person left off. The rest of us don't know what's in store, so it's an adventure for, for everyone. everyone. Oh, oh my uh, goodness. Can we change the definition of that word, please? Yes. Forget the Urban Dictionary. Go to Written Together. So join us for fun, for mystery, creativity, but most of all, to be delighted by stories written, written together. together. Howdy do, campers. Who's here with us today? We've got uh, me. I'm Kevin. Summer's here. She finally made it. Summer! Yay! No robot summer. We're going to have to re-record the intro with your actual voice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm Janice. And I'm Dee. So, as we talked about in episode zero, uh, we're doing a kind of a round-robin style storytelling. We are all absolutely excited for this. Um, and if I'm rambling a little too much, it's probably because I just chugged Three energy drinks before we started. But that's neither here nor oh, there. Oh, this is great. I'm glad I'm narrating my my chapter and not you. Because it would be like, okay, this is going to be done in like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so for the first season, the subject we have chosen is from a writing prompt off of Tumblr. A man suffering with depression moves into a haunted house. This house is haunted by seven spirits. Each spirit represents one of the deadly sins. Rather than tormenting him, these seven spirits help him deal with his depression. That was the writing prompt. And the person who got the first segment of this season is Janice, as we found out also in episode zero when we spun the wheels of randomness. And the subject, or the sin for this segment, was wrath. So without further ado, Janice and wrath. Oh, I love that Janice and Rath are in the same sentence. That's great. This episode for me was titled The Beginning. Raoul Bennett was exhausted. Not in a very, I've been working really hard kind of way, but more like a, I just don't want to do anything but sleep kind of way. Ever since Esteban decided he no longer wanted to share his life with him, Raoul just never felt the need to do much of anything. Of course, he really wanted to be his old self, motivated and disciplined and happy, but right now he felt one emotion, nothing, which he wasn't even sure it counted as an emotion. He'd really had a wonderful life. Just a few short weeks ago, he was living with the love of his life, or who he thought was the love of his life, in a large three-bedroom house with two adorable dogs, the hope of potentially raising a family on the horizon. He had a great job that paid well and had been going to the gym regularly and even meditating. Now here he was, one fucking day blurring into the next. He hadn't checked in at work, which probably meant he was fired, hadn't even thought of the word gym and had leftover takeout bags and boxes scattered all over the house. Not even masturbating gave him satisfaction or the dopamine boost he knew he needed. At least he'd been lucky enough to sell his share of the house to Esteban. Of course, it was because he knew Esteban's new sugar daddy had footed the bill. Fucking unfaithful twink. But he'd found this house for a bargain and he'd needed one thing to go right. The petite, overly made realtor was all two white teeth when he pulled up onto the driveway. Hello! She was waving her hand like Miss America on parade. Her voice rang in his ears like a yapping dog with a southern twang. Mr. Bannett, I'm just so thrilled for y'all to see this place. I have a feeling it's exactly what y'all have been looking for. I am just super excited. Shit. Raoul hated when people tried to be excessively sweet just to get what they wanted. He felt manipulated and cheap, like a common whore. He also fucking hated when people used the word y'all. Yeah, I'm excited too, he replied flatly, his eyes taking in the exterior of the house. 
For being a two-story house, it wasn't enormous. The blue painted exterior was painted to a light hue and chipped in places. The trim around the windows a dull gray. Even the heavy oak front door hadn't been cleaned up, boasting dark stains and splotches in various shapes and sizes. The house seemed a bit old and run down. No, not run down, neglected. Rel knew how it felt. It's really got lovely potential, she chirped as she led him through the foyer and into the living room. It's an open concept with some upgrades, including all hardwood floors and some renovation potential. Perfect for a starter home. God, her realtor speak together with her slow drawl was giving him a headache. Hmm, he said noncommittally as he wandered into the kitchen. The appliances were a mixture of old and new, though Raoul didn't really care. He'd never been into cooking. Esteban had been the one who did all that. He opened one of the cabinets, pretending to care about what it looked like inside, just in case the twangy realtor was hovering nearby. Closing it softly, he turned away to leave the kitchen and ran into her. Wow, y'all are really thorough. I didn't know the kitchen would be y'all's thing. I'd check every detail, too, if I'm being honest. What are you? He turned back toward the kitchen and froze. Every door was wide open. Cabinets, oven, dishwasher, even the refrigerator and freezer. Ralph felt a small jolt of fear. The first flicker of feeling he'd had in a while. No, wait, but I didn't. It's okay, sir. Y'all was just making sure everything's in working order. But we can't leave all of this open, electric bills and all that. She chuckled half-heartedly as she closed all the doors. Raoul remained motionless. What in the actual fuck had just happened? He was still trying to piece together some reasonable excuse for every single door in the kitchen to have been opened. Maybe he'd done it and not realized it? As she led him up the stairs to the bedrooms. Here's the master, she began, but let out a yelp as the door slammed shut behind her. The room temperature dropped enough to give Raoul a chill. <laughs> Must have been a window left open somewhere and the cross breeze pushed it shut. Her shaking hands were enough to tell Raoul that she didn't believe it either. They rushed through the rest of the rooms of the house, her too white smile wider than before as she stayed back in the hallway. Well, now, Mr. Bennett, I don't want to hover. But a chill had settled into the house that hadn't been there earlier, and it felt more alive. The realtor woman breathed a sigh of relief as they stepped back into the sunshine. She hadn't even shown him the backyard. Not that he would have a reason to go back there. Esteban had kept the dogs, too. Well, what'd y'all think? I know it has its quirks, she spoke quickly, pushing her stiff hairsprayed bangs off her forehead with a slightly trembling, perfectly manicured hand. And it's rumored to have unwanted guests, but it's a great place and you can't find anything else in this market this nice for this price. It's a downright bargain. And she was right. It was a nice place. And Raoul did want to prove he could survive on his own, at least at some point. But honestly, right now, he really didn't give a shit. He needed a place to live, and this was as good a place as any. And hell, maybe if there were unwanted guests, they'd help put an end to his misery. He looked in those big, round, money-hungry, pleading eyes, and with a half-smile, he said, I'll take it. Raoul blinked his eyes open rapidly in the bright morning sunlight. His head was the only thing poking out of the big fluffy comforter, and the only sunbeam coming through the window was focused directly into his retinas. Why had he left the blinds open? He'd been living here for... Wow. He had no idea how long it had been at this point. Though it must have been about a month since he'd signed the papers. He really couldn't remember. Just like he couldn't remember opening the blinds or the windows or sometimes leaving all the lights on. Every day blended into the next. 
The beauty of being alone without any friends was that no one checked up on him or stopped by unannounced or even called or texted. Come to think of it, where was his phone? Ugh, did it even fucking matter? Maybe he'd look for it later when he got hungry and needed a food delivery. He wasn't going anywhere. He hadn't even changed out of his sweatpants and t-shirt he'd worn to move in. It was too much of an effort to shower, change, and put on new boxers. He'd stay like that until he had the energy to do those things. At least he didn't need to do laundry. He turned over, pulling the thick material over his head. Ah, the beautiful darkness. He was so tired and just wanted to go back to sleep for a bit more. Oh, Raoul knew he was depressed. After all, he wasn't stupid. He just didn't give a fuck. He also knew he was laying at the bottom of a deep, dark oubliette of his mind, and he just couldn't see how he could get out of it. Why in the fucking hell is this dick just laying there? He's moved in just to fuck up our house, make it smell like hot garbage, and sit under a fucking comforter all day? Rath watched with disgusted rage as the man sat on his recliner and watched TV, barely blinking as the images flashed by. Jesus fucking Christ. She was so done with humans interrupting her existence with theirs. She hated them. Hated them. Lust rolled their eyes. Here we go again. Every time we get a little peace and fucking quiet, these people come in here and ruin everything. Why don't they get the hint and just fuck off? And look at him. She pointed a taloned finger in his blissfully unaware face. He's just sitting there fucking useless, which really doesn't surprise me one bit. There's nothing wrong with relaxing, whined Sloth. He doesn't have to do anything. Let him just lay around all day if he wants to. Makes me happy he's not one of those super active people that get up early and do something horrible, like running or yoga. Sloth shuddered. At least there's a fresh face in the house, sighed Lust, licking their lips. It's been so long since we've had anyone to play with. You can't have them all to yourself, Lust, Greed said, pushing them aside to get a better look. I want a chance at him too. So you can have him all to yourself, Lust said silkily. Of course, said Greed with a grin. But he is so boring. He just lies around sleeping all day. Clearly, he doesn't have any friends since he's all alone, said Envy, gazing longingly from the corner of the room. I wish I could be all alone. Besides, he's not nearly as interesting as I am, or is good looking. Lust rolled their eyes again. Wrath brimmed with fury. Her pupils were wild sapphire and violet flames as she continued to watch the human burrito sit with eyes glazed as he took the last bite of cold pizza and threw the crust by the pizza box on the floor. She wanted to strangle him with whatever was closest to her. Animals, she spit vehemently. And to think, we were once one of those same creatures. We should just kill him and get it over with. Wrath pressed her talon-tipped forefinger against his forehead and pushed. Her talon went through his brow and into his skull, though never piercing the skin. She didn't have power like that. None of them did. They had influence. Some would say that was more than powerful enough. Wrath's eyes narrowed. The man hadn't moved at all. Most people would be clutching their heads in their hands, an instant migraine sprouting from wherever Wrath laid that elegant finger. White hot anger erupted at the failed attempt to give him the pain he rightfully deserved. This human was vacant, as though he were somewhere else, a husk left staring at a flickering screen. Where gluttony and pride, 
said Envy loudly, clearly tired of being ignored. You know them, said Lust with a sigh, draping themselves along the back of the recliner. Gluttony just can't get enough of whatever she's doing, and Pride can't get enough of herself. Greed laughed loudly. Wrath's eyes were a pure fire as she turned to Lust. Well, find them. Something is going on with this human. He doesn't seem like all the others that we've encountered. He's not as susceptible to our influence as all the rest of them. And the ire that that brings me makes me want to burn this house to the ground. Oh, make Sloth go get them, Lust said, blowing seductively into the human's ear. The man remained unbothered. Sloth never does anything around here. Greed spoke before Sloth could reply. I'll go. Pride loves when I spend any time focused on her. No, I'll go, said Envy, pushing Greed out of the way. You'll just want to take all the credit for looking for them all for yourself. Enough! Wrath's voice cut through their argument like a sharp blade. Both of you go. Greed smiled smugly at Envy as Envy gave Greed the middle finger on one hand while simultaneously miming jerking off with the other. Just get out of my fucking face, you two. As they disappeared, Lust looked over at Wrath and asked curiously, Why are you calling a gathering? We haven't had one in decades. Surely there isn't anything that bad going on. Wrath stayed silent for a few moments, contemplating her decision slash idea. I think our human is broken, Wrath said at last, as she watched Sloth settle down on the sofa and watch TV with the man. And though we'll probably all hate it, I think it may be up to us to fix him. Anthony. All right. Very nice. Okay, yeah. that was amazing. That, that was amazing. Oh my God. I'm in it. I'm so in it. That was really good. I'm so glad. Oh my God, I'm like sweating. <laughs> so if you're not the next writer, we need to make sure that whoever is gets that so that they can keep the the genders and the personalities and stuff somewhat consistent. I purposefully didn't do gluttony and pride to kind of keep that open to any kind of interpretation. It's just, I wanted to introduce a group of them, but I didn't, I felt like I was worried about that because I was like, well, you know, I'm kind of taking over some of the identities of some of the deadly sins, but it's hard to picture Wrath being by herself because who is she going to rage with? That was really good, Janice. I really enjoyed that. You did a really nice job of of setting the stage and, and giving us a yeah. good feel of all of the people involved. That was really good. Thank you. It felt almost Sandman-ish, which is a huge compliment if you read Sandman. Yes. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Very That's awesome. Good. I'm telling you, like, it's, I was like, I don't know how to begin this. And it's funny. I, I didn't know whether it was going to be a, a man or a woman. And I opened the document and I'm like, okay, like, what are we, what are we feeling here? And it's like, this guy just popped into my head looking like, just like a saddest, the saddest thing oh. on the planet, you know? And I have friends who battle with depression. And one of the things is the conflict of memory that they actually don't remember lots of things during a depressive stage. Like they'll come out of it and it's like, they don't remember half of what happened because they were on automatic. Mm. And so that part with having the deadly sins haunting, it was like, he wouldn't even notice in the beginning because it would kind of be like, he's in this like state where he just doesn't really understand that that's happening. He's like, oh, did I forget to do that? Like, okay. <laughs> And I, if, if I was wrath, that would piss me off. Cause I'd be like, hello. <laughs> I opened these blinds to wake yeah. your ass up and <laughs> you had no clue. Like, <laughs> bitch, you should be mad. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I will not be ignored. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that would, you know, the looking up ideas about wrath and the concept of it, it wasn't just 
anger because a lot of people try to translate wrath to anger. And it's this, they, they call it um, vengeful justice. Oh. And so it's like wrath has this set of rules in her where it's like, if you deserve my fury, that's what you're going to receive. So I really liked that concept of her, uh, of wrath itself, but I don't know why it became a her, but I guess it's because, you know, hell, hell hath, hath no, no fury. fury, I guess, you know, <laughs> I was like, yeah, she, you know. And that I can do. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Shall we spin the wheels of randomness and find out what's going to happen next week? Boop and boop. Yes. <laughs> the official sound. <laughs> Greed and D. Yay! Oh. <laughs> D is up next. So, so my little thing in my head going, don't pick me, don't pick me, don't pick me, didn't work. Oh. <laughs> no. The universe is like, all I heard was pick me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn it. So D is up next, writing about greed. Oh, this should be fun. This is going to be so good. Greed wasn't there, right? Yes, he was. A little yes. bit. A little oh, bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a little. Who were the two? Gluttony. Gluttony and pride, yeah, right? And pride. Gluttony and pride. They were the ones who weren't yeah. there. Okay, okay. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to rewind. <laughs> greed was there in the room, right? Yeah, greed was there in the room. <laughs> yes. It was gluttony and pride who weren't <laughs> yeah. there, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's Good why job you pay attention. listening, Kevin. Yes. <laughs> did, did greed leave with envy? Yes. Greed left okay. with envy to find gluttony and pride. Yeah. Man, I really enjoyed that. That was such a fun thing to write. You did a really good job performing it, too. Oh, yeah. thank you. I particularly liked the real estate agent. <laughs> oh, you like, yes. You like my, my real estate agent. She was just so thrilled. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sure my next door neighbor thought that I was insane going through all of these different characters. He was probably like, what? Cool. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. This is fantastic. I did miss, like, uh, uh, the, since everyone was muted, I couldn't hear any reactions. How are we going to work that? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, I, maybe I, I guess I shouldn't have, I guess I shouldn't have told everybody to be muted. Uh, yeah, but. We also need to be able to hear her over you laughing, Kevin. <laughs> were you were you laughing? I oh, was. Yeah, he was laughing a lot. Oh yeah. I was I was Me absolutely. Too. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, we just do like a couple of laugh tracks right now and we'll weave them in. <laughs> 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 totally natural. Right? Totally natural. That's right. So <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> It chortled into my belly. <laughs> sure. That's one of my favorite words, chortled. Oh if goodness. I could have used it at some point in this thing, I would have, but he's not, maybe he's the next not in a good mindset to chortle. Exactly. I, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really great word, and, and it almost belongs in Fluffernutter, because I swear to God, it sounds like someone gagging when they're sucking the dick. That is, yes, she chortled on, yes. Yeah. Oh God. my goodness. Can we change the definition of that word, please? Ooh, yes. Forget Urban Dictionary. Go to Written Together. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We don't need Urban Dictionary. That's so old. Oh my gosh. Oh my Come here. We'll give you some interesting phrases, some new ones. <laughs> uh, well, excellent. okay. Well, this has been a trip. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you getting together and doing this. And uh, thank you, Janice, for putting in all that work. It was amazing. And D, Thank I'm you. really looking forward to your episode. Me too. Thank you. All right. Well, um, uh, unless anyone has anything else, anyone? I hope all the listeners liked it and continue to listen to the next one and the next one and the next Abs one. Right. Absolutely. I hope the listeners lower their standards at this point in time. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. And then I surprise them. Ah, that's, that's, yes. see, that's what I want. There you go. There you go. I was right. like, okay, I see where she's going. Yes. The non-writer yes. is doing the next thing. So just prepare, <laughs> lower your standards, and then I will just impress you. And blow us away. All right. <laughs> Be prepared to not expect anything and then have it knocked out of the park. Exactly. Right? Yes, yes. Love it. <laughs> All right, well, with that, I declare the match extinguished. See you all, all right. next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 
background music and sound effects courtesy of Zapsplat. Check him out at zapsplat.com. If you'd like to know more about Written Together and the stories we've told, visit us at writtentogether.com.